Alright guys, before I rustle it here with my WWE Roadblock 2016 review, fearless Nikki t-shirt, yeah, why not? Um, so yeah, Roadblock 2016, I was watching it last night, a few things annoyed me, a few specific things which I'll get to. Uh, the show actually ended around 35 minutes early, which was ridiculous. I don't understand why they made it a three hour show if they're going to cut half an hour off it. It's just a bit dumb to me, I felt like they could have done something else maybe. But overall, the show was fine, actually. I think it kind of impressed me to a degree. There were some good matches, which we'll, we'll get to. So anyway, no pre-show. We go right into the main show. And we start off with the WWE Tag Team titles. The New Day, Kofi Kingston and uh, Big E, of course, come out. And um, Bootlios, a new serial, Bootlios. It's a real thing, and it's being marketed. Uh, there's also a new New Day t-shirt, which is nice. Uh, then the... But basically faces now, which I I get it because, you know, everyone was behind them. But, I, I don't know, being faces was kind of what made everybody hate the New Day. The, the gimmick didn't work for faces. But um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, we're all behind the New Day now, to be honest, anyway. Well, a lot of us are. Anyway, so then the League of Nations come out. Actually, no, they don't. Seamus and Barrett come out. Without Rusev and Del Rio, they were not at the show. Kind of shocking. I actually expected a, a DQ finish with them not coming out. But, um, so the match is, of course, the New Day against the League of Nations, Sheamus and Barrett, for the WWE Tag Team titles. I thought this was a decent matchup, it was a good way to start the show. Uh, New Day, I think, won a little bit too definitively, so it was, like, so defined of a finish that there's no way that the League of Nations can really get out of it, apart from the fact that Barrett, at one point, did actually have a three count on um, Kofi Kingston with a, a really, I would I think it's quite a poor double team finisher. It's just Sheamus hits a suplex slam, a suplex slam, and then Barrett hits a super kick, and that's the, the double team finisher. I thought that was kind of weak, but um, yeah, Barrett had a Woods done there. The referee was distracted by Woods at ringside. Um, I mean. I was pulling for Barrett because Barrett's leaving and wanted him to have one more title. But of course my prediction was the New Day and in the end they retain after Big E hits uh, the big ending. Big E's getting a lot of the pinfalls for the New Day now. Maybe him going to be the uh, maybe he's going to be the breakout star of the New Day. Um but yeah, decent matchup. I gave it 2 and 3 quarter stars. The New Day retain. Fairly predictable to be honest. Uh next up we have Jericho coming out and going full on heel on the Canada crowd. I loved the promo. Awesome. Jericho heel is far better than Jericho face. Um, and his matchup was uh, him against Jack Swagger. Uh, I was relatively uninterested. However, I did like the fact that they kind of remembered that Jack Swagger cashed in money in the bank on Jericho, which was a nice little touch. Probably made me bump the matchup upgrade. Uh, I gave it two stars in the end. Jericho couldn't beat Swagger with the walls, which he just did the walls. He didn't do the Lion Tamer. Uh, he, he beat him with a code breaker. Um, around eight minutes, a good match, well, okay match, I gave it two stars, you know, it's neither here nor there, to be honest, uh, and then we had the NXT Tag Team titles, and this was the biggest match, really, in all four of these guys' careers, biggest stage for Carmel as well, when you think about it, even though she did relatively little, and uh, this was a fine tag team matchup, and it probably proves why Dash and Dawson are my favourite tag team in the division, I do think, again, the finish was a little bit too defined, a little bit too easy for Dash and Dawson to uh, retain. But uh, solid work from Dash and Dawson. Enzo tags in Cass. Cass is mastering the hot tag, kind of like Jason Jordan does. Seriously good work from uh, Cass there. Um, some great spots in this matchup included uh, a shatter machine to uh, Big Cass outside the ring, which looked awesome. And then the finish came when... The shatter machine's a good move because they can do it in a variety of ways. So this time... Uh, Scott Dawson picked Enzo up on his shoulder. Uh, Dash went to the top rope, hit a code break off the top rope, which was a kind of a nice finish. One, two, three. Dash and Dawson retain. Fairly predictable again. So uh, I gave it three and a quarter stars. Really good job there. Dash and Dawson are my favourite tag team, I think, in WWE at the moment. Uh, maybe wrestling at the moment. I really like the rough style of them. I don't like the revival name, but... Uh, I really like them at the moment. Three and a quarter stars, a really good showcase for those guys. Next up, we have the Divas match. And I knew this would be one of the best matches on the card because Natalia and Charlotte have such chemistry. And they really just nailed it in front of this Toronto crowd. 
Uh, Natty really had me hooked. I really wanted to see Natty win. I knew Charlotte was going to win. Fairly predictable card, but I knew Charlotte was going to win. Um, in the end, Natalia kicked out of a natural selection, which she didn't do at NXT TakeOver like two years ago when uh, Charlotte beat her for the NXT Women's title, which was a nice touch uh, that they actually referenced that fantastic match. And this match was very good, it just wasn't as good. Uh, in the end, uh, Natalia had Charlotte and Sharpshooter. Charlotte, I believe, escaped. That was a figure eight. Charlotte kept escaping from. Uh, in the end, uh, Sh Natalia went. Ric Flair got on the apron. Natalia went to hit him. Uh, Charlotte rolled uh, Natalia up with help from the ropes for leverage. One, two, three. Charlotte retains the Divas title. I gave the match three and a half stars. A very good, technical, solid storytelling match. Really well done from those two Divas uh, or women. Women. Women, not divas. We move on to Bray Wyatt versus Brock Lesnar. Or, should I say Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper against Brock Lesnar? Or, should I say Luke Harper against Brock Lesnar? Now, I don't know why they changed it to a 2 on one handicap match. I don't know what this did for Bray Wyatt at all, because he literally spent the whole match outside of the ring. Uh... But for Luke Harper, I think this was an amazing showcase. He had Lesnar down. He super kicked Lesnar. He gave him a suicide dive. He kicked him in the face like several times. He gave him a discus clothesline. He got a two count on Lesnar. I don't think John Cena even got a two count on Lesnar. Um, so that's freaking sweet. Congratulations to Luke Harper. Uh, but in the end, suplex C, suplex C, suplex C, suplex C, 1, 2, 3, F5, 1, 2, 3. Brock Lesnar wins. I gave the match three stars. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think this was a brutal, hard-hitting, well-done matchup. I just don't know what this does for Bray Wyatt. This helped Bray Wyatt a little. And I feel like we're building towards Bray Wyatt, Brock Lesnar at some point because he didn't get involved. It can't be at WrestleMania because we've got Lesnar and Ambrose. Mm. But, spoiler alert. Um, yeah, you, you, you know, if you're watching this review, you probably know what happened anyway. Um... But yeah, three stars, good match, solid work from Luke Harper, really. Uh, then we move on to another impromptu match, Sami Zayn against Stardust. I think the issue with this matchup, again, is it's just too... Just, mm, Sami Zayn, which gets points, but um, just... Mm, it's nothing too special. I give it two stars, Sami Zayn wins with a Huluva kick. Nice, not just a stupid roll-up finish. Huluva kick, one, two, three. Sami Zayn wins, beats Stardust, a, a, you know... A, Pretty solid competitor in Stardust. That's a good win for Sami Zayn. And finally, we move on to the main event, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. The game, Triple H against the lunatic fringe Dean Ambrose. And this matchup was very, very good from a story perspective. This match had you believing Ambrose would win. Especially at one point where he hit Dirty Deeds and the referee counted the 1-2-3. Three. You thought Ambrose had won. I was watching this match with my friend at the same time. We both thought Ambrose had won. We were shocked. We were like, holy crap, what just happened? And then we found out his foot was under the bottom rope, which meant the match con continued. Um, Ambrose did an amazing spot where he does the elbow outside of the ring on Triple H. He then went to elbow Triple H through the announce table. And this is where my main issue with this match comes. I've seen a lot of outlets rate this match quite highly around the four and a quarter star mark. My grade is lower, and I'm going to say why. I predicted the end segment of this matchup as it was going on. I was talking to my friend on Uvo, get it? Uh, I was talking to my friend on Uvo, and I said, this is exactly what's going to happen. Ambrose is going to miss the elbow drop, he's going to get in the ring at nine, and then he's going to get pedigreed. And that's exactly what happened. Triple H retains the WWE World title. But in a very good match, I think, to be honest, people don't... It's surprising, because this is a dream match. Ambrose and Triple H, nobody ever thought this sort of match would happen. So this is a match that I want to look back on in years to come, especially on Ambrose's career, as a launching pad. He's main eventing with a guy like Triple H. That's a big deal. I don't think people really understood that enough. In the end, I gave the match three and a half stars. I do think it was the match of the night, that or the Divas match. Uh, although the NXT tag match was pretty great. But yeah, three and a half stars, a very good matchup, a very good way to close the show. And it's good, I don't think, but I, I think it's good because we now have our path to WrestleMania set up. And there's no more roadblocks. Uh, so in the end, I want to give the show 7 out of 10. I think it was a good show. I liked the Divas match a lot, obviously. I liked the main event. Uh, I liked the fact that Ambrose had me believing at points. 
and I really like the NXT Tag Team title match. I think it was a good showcase for Enzo and Cass and Das and Dawson. So, thanks for watching, guys. This has been my uh, end of my WWE Roadblock 2016 review. Like, comment, subscribe for more. This has been Revolver Ocelot.